Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Catch, and I am back for another I Saw It in Somerset Studio magazine. This week I had a bit of a struggle, which I mentioned yesterday, um, but I have decided on attempting some of these grungy, I do like grungy, I just uh, wasn't sure what I would do with them, and I'm still not sure, but I'm going to make, make just some fabric... Uh, I guess you could call them pages. She did like a whole journal, which eventually, you know, I might end up doing that. But for today, we're just going to make some of these in my own style. I'm not going to use, um, I am going to use a house, but not, you know, she's got like an arch here and whatever, a car, but you can do it however. But it's kind of just grungy. There's, it looks uh, like acrylic paint. There's like gesso. There's stitching all random. There's some hand French knots. I don't know. There's just all kinds of things. And I won't do every one of these things, but um, just to show you kind of what we're, what we're going to do today. So oh, I need that's That's my daughter's podcast. And she is on YouTube. If any of you are interested, she's uh, talking about design, graphic design. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how I did, which I've done this before on a Somerset Studio um, magazine video. But I took this image of this lady, it was just in black and white, and I transferred it onto fabric. So we're gonna do that with this house so that we can use the house later or you know whenever, depending on how much we get done. But I'll show you so you know how I did the lady in case you didn't see that other video, um, you'll know. So I'm using matte gel, and um, I'm not sure if you could do this with uh, Mod Podge or not. I don't know. <laughs> you could try it. But anyway, I'm using matte gel, which is just a different kind of, it's a lot thicker is I think what I like about it than the Mod Podge, but Mod Podge probably would work. And you want a pretty good amount. I mean, you don't want it to be like too thick, but a good, a good layer on there so that you can get the, hopefully the image to transfer. Okay, I need to stop doing that or all the colors just gonna come off the, this is just a regular, um, I printed it on my inkjet printer, not laser printer. I heard it works better with the laser printers. I don't know. <laughs> I know nothing about all this. I just know that that's the, I'm gonna show you how I did it. Mine is printed on an inkjet printer. So that's that's what I do know. It's an Epson Eco Tank is what I have. So you just want to make sure that you rub it real good. So hopefully the image will transfer. And I'm going to let it set a minute and we'll work on something else. I don't know if we'll end up using this one or not, but I just want to show you. So then you want it to dry entirely before you put it in water. Then you put it into water and rub off um this backing and then you can see the image that's on the on the paper so um i am using just tea dyed you can see it's darker here lighter here whatever um tea dyed fabric and i use instant tea if that helps you to know that it does give you a darker dye than um what do you call it than regular tea bags just because, you know, you can get more, you can put more in and make it as dark as you want. Wow, that was very difficult for me to say. All right, so we're gonna let that one set for a minute. I'm gonna put this up. And we're gonna play with this one while we wait a moment. And I think, I actually need that again, because I think I'm going to, put this piece and this is just a piece of Tim Holtz fabric it's got some writing like I said I don't ever do them exactly like they did them because I of course don't have the exact same things that they have we're just going with the concept right and so this one is tea dyed this is not tea dyed you can see that it's a lot lighter in color but I think I do need that stuff again you could also probably use a fabric glue I don't have any fabric glue so I'm just going to use this 
and I think it will be just fine. So how are you guys? I hope that you're all doing well. I am doing well. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. Real chilly this morning. We were just about to freezing this morning, so it was chilly, but it's all nice and sunshine and clear and beautiful out, so that is excellent. Makes me happy. I need to say hugs and blessings to Angela, Anne, and Nicolina. Thank you guys so much for your kind comments. Always watching. I appreciate you very, very much. And welcome to new subscribers. And welcome back to those of you who have watched me for a long time, short time. I've gotten quite a few new subscribers lately. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate all of you because I know... Um, you guys have been commenting and all those kind of things and that really helps my channel because then it goes out in the algorithm, the dreaded algorithm. And that way more people hopefully will view it, right? So very fun to have new people watching. Okay, so I'm going to put her on there and I'm going to use this again. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sort of discombobulated today. I'm not sure why I've walked. I feel good. I've eaten. I've done all the things. <laughs> Had a cup of coffee. But I am feeling a little discombobulated. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. And I think it's just that I sort of struggled with this. Because I'm not really sure how I want to do it. It's like I'm just having a brain issue with how to how to make it happen the way I want it, you know? sure we've all been there so yeah but I hope you guys are doing good I like how this it turned out when I tore it and stuff it tore all jaggedy and weird it's just kind of cool I like it I like it a lot that was just happenstance and then what I did oh because I didn't explain this at all but I used um and I'll be, I'll be stitching on that, so I'm not really worried if it, like, sticks 100% or not. Um, this Tim Holtz Vintage Photo, I used that and just kind of put a little with the dropper part. I took it out and just put a little here and there and then spritzed it with water, just regular old water, to make it react like that. And that's how I got a lot of the darker spots. And it was a little bit damp from being uh, tea dyed. So, yeah, and I'll, I'll show you when we do, when the house is dry and we do the house one. And I know it's kind of backwards. We're going kind of backwards today, but I didn't know how else to show you the steps. All right, so then I have, stop blathering, and I've got just white gesso and brown acrylic paint. Nothing fancy. It's just this cheap raw umber. So you don't need anything special and then it, I think she just sort of put um sorry I'm looking for something to put this on you'd think I would remember to grab something I remembered to grab this and everything but uh you don't want like perfect brush strokes you kind of want that messy just here and there like even like that even though it's not a thin line or anything it's just that kind of it's a mess right it's old it's well loved <laughs> and used and all those kind of things you know what I forgot is a water to clean my brushes it's always something I forget you know and then there's like brown too in spots so I feel like I want to add a little just brown here and there and then spritz it a little maybe and then it kind of goes into the gesso And then you could also take like a Stabilo All marker and, you know, get it in the mix there. You could even just make some marks or draw like a circle. However, 
you could stamp. Oops, what am I doing? Oh, <laughs> y'all, it's bad. It's bad today. <laughs> You're going to be like, why do I watch this lady? <laughs> My goodness. You just, I don't know, just make some marks however you want. And then you could even take things like I have this hairspray top. I think I'm just going to kind of go in the same spot. And I like it when it gets wet because it moves all over. Oh my word, I cannot spray that thing. What is up? It's just water. But it is giving me heck. Okay, so we're gonna have to let that dry. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside for a minute and then I will stitch it and do all that kind of stuff. I'm thinking, <clears throat> I don't know that I want a whole lot there. I have to just use a, since I forgot to grab water. Some, some days, you know, the old brain doesn't, it doesn't do what I want it to. Okay, that will be that for that one. I'm going to work on getting this dry and um, I'm also going to get the other piece dry and then I'll come back and show you how to get the backing off. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. That's mostly dry. I'm, I'm going to let that one set for a minute, but this one's dry. So I can show you if you haven't seen this before, once you get that all the way dry. And that again is just a, a picture that I printed out that's in one of my digital kits. I think it's people of the past. Um, but anyway, and you just start lightly rubbing. You don't want to rub like too, too hard because then you'll rub off all the image. It's better if you let it set for a few minutes. It works a lot better. But we're doing a video, so, you know, don't always get to have all the things perfectly done. This is going to be kind of one of those stop and go um, type videos, so... <clears throat> if you would like to fast forward, I totally get it, especially if you've seen this done before. It's best if you let it set for like, you know, two minutes, three minutes, something like that. But it's starting to come off. It really just has to get wet. So I finally figured out what that show is called, mainly because we watched it again last night that I talked about, I don't know, probably a week or so ago. Uh, it's called The Summit. And so it's the one where they take the people to New Zealand and they all have to hike up this mountain. And I still don't know what the mountain's called. But anyway, um, some people told me what it was called too. So thank you to you, all of you who tried to save me. But um, they go, they all try to work together to hike up there there's a time constraint they have to do it within a certain amount of time you know so if people are slowing them down they can vote them off all those kind of things and um then you know however many people get to this the summit of this mountain they split the million dollars between you know however many are left by the time they get there because each week they have to vote somebody off whether you know, they're slowing them down or not. And I was kind of amazed because uh, last night they ended up voting off somebody that I, f I feel like they should wait to vote people off that are strong or whatever, but they're kind of already going for the biggest threat, which, which I do understand. But my husband and I were talking that it might be better to get the people that are maybe slower off so that you can meet the goal because if you don't meet the time then none of you are going to get a million dollars right so I mean it's really kind of sad honestly as far as 
you kind of get to be friends with people and then, but it's like all those shows, Survivor and all that stuff. But anyways, we were a little surprised that they are already going for the sort of cutthroat, who's the strong one, who's the biggest threat, those kind of things, instead of maybe who's slowing us down the most. I don't know what, what what's your guys' take. <laughs> if you're watching it, a lot of you might not even be know what I'm talking about, but I mean, it's a pretty good show. It's pretty crazy. It's beautiful there. It makes me want to go hike. Not like that. Like some of those, uh, they had to do this metal ladder that looked slightly terrifying. The only saving grace, which might allow my brain to say, yeah, you can do it, is that they're tied in. Because like, I loved the zip line when we went to Alaska, went on the highest zip line or whatever in Alaska longest zip line and um that was awesome because you're all like in the seat and I don't know I felt safe maybe I'm dumb <laughs> but um I might be okay with some of the things because you're tied in but I don't know some of the cliffs and all that I don't know if I could do it or not it looks a little scary to me okay so there is that and now I'm gonna have to pause and get this dry again I forgot to tell you guys that I did add some of the Vintage Photo Distress Oxide Spray to that picture, which I'm sure you can tell because there's other colors on there that we didn't add on there. I just looked at it and was like, it doesn't really go with the photo, you know? So I had to add a little bit of that. But we'll do some of that on this one too. I like to uh, go along the edge <clears throat> of the photos and kind of mess them up a little too. We're going to tear the fabric, so... I mean, that's not imperative, but it just kind of helps it blend in so it doesn't look so, I don't know, straight on there or whatever. I'm sure you guys get what I'm saying. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you get what I'm saying. Uh, but anyways, I do like that show. It's very, it's quite interesting. And like I said, beautiful and makes me want to want to go there although I don't particularly want to do what they're doing especially when they make snow camp and all that <laughs> it's snowing I'm like mm, I think I'll pass I think I'll pass on that but it's still pretty I love hiking in Alaska where we went there wasn't snow at that time up, up higher there was but so I'm just trying to get some of the water out I might go ahead and just do some of the um, distress oxide because it is good to uh, do it on when it's a little damp like I mentioned because obviously that's what makes the distress oxide react I'm just gonna do this since it's just water. I already got paint on my mat, even though I put something down. I'm trying to expedite this. Some of these things are very hard to do on camera, I'm not gonna lie. I think that's why I was having a little bit of a struggle with what to do. So what I did with that one is you just kind of take this out and, you know, put a little here and there and it distresses it very nicely. There's another one in this magazine that's all rusted, and I tried to figure out how to do that. This actually would have been a good way to do it, which I didn't realize, but um, I am not doing that rusting thing. I'm just not. <laughs> To dye stuff. It sort of goes along with the avocado dye and what was the other one we were talking about last week? Oh, the eco dye. Yeah. Or two weeks ago, whenever that was. I just have no interest in doing that at all. So now I don't really want to do the gesso and all that yet because I just don't.
because that sort of is meant to go on the piece that you put it on top of. This is just like how I did the, the lady photo. All right, I'm gonna pause and get this dry again. <laughs> Okay, I am back. This is dry, so we're gonna tear this down a bit because it doesn't need to be quite so. I probably should have torn it earlier, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So this one, you can see I have a lot more space around it. I could tear it out more, but rather than um, adding maybe another piece under, I'm just gonna use this piece right here. Um, you can see I did stitch around this one. It's still just a little bit wet. And then I have some pieces of lace that I was playing around with. But we're going to do this one with the GSO and all those kinds of things. Had the glue <laughs> stuck to that. Mm. Okay. I had to get another paintbrush because now I do have the other one in water and it's too wet. <clears throat> So I'm gonna just do the same thing, just make some marks. I should have done the white first. I don't know what I was thinking. That wasn't very smart. I have to squeeze it out. Some days, I'm not very bright with these things. The order of things, you know? And I am putting it into the gesso and then, you know, drying it off a little bit, getting a little bit off because you kind of want that dry brush look, if you know what I mean, just so it doesn't look so like thick blotchy bits, you know. And then we're going to just do the same sort of thing with this one as we did with the other one. I think I want a bigger... Oh, I know what else I wanted to stamp on there. I want to stamp some words. Words. Script. That's the... <laughs> Sorry. Of course, it's always, you know, the last stamp pad. But... So I just have uh, Black Set Distress Oxide because this one is new and it's very juicy. So it, it marks well. And this is just an old Stampin' Up! script stamp that I have. You can use any script stamp. It doesn't doesn't matter. I kind of want to put a little something over that because I know I will stamp right across it. And I don't really want to do that. So we're just going to mask it a bit. I don't mind if a little gets on there. I just don't want to cover up the house, you know, to where you can't see it. I didn't ink the whole thing, I probably should have, but we'll see what we get. That works. That works. Perfect. Let's use a cork. I don't think another one will fit, huh? I usually like to do three, but... Mm, sorry, trying to decide what it needs. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to get this one dry. <laughs> 
and then do some stitching on this one and then you'll say what are you going to do with those right because what in the world well you could use this as a journal topper it would look pretty cool if you had a bigger piece of this <laughs> you know had a bit hanging out put it on top of a journal that would be a fun journal topper you could turn it into a journaling card or you know tag something like that or what we're gonna do this is a um glassine type bag and we're gonna put it on here and it does hang over that a little bit i'm not gonna worry about that this piece can go under here and then we're gonna make a journaling card to go in there so i will be back in just a minute okay i'm back I have this one all crazy stitched around. If you did not want to do as much uh, stitching like that, then, you know, obviously don't. Um, you could do some hand stitching, which I'm going to do just some, cr you know, like um, X's or whatever on here. But you could do anything. And it doesn't even have to be anything great. Or you could go all out and make it look really, like, fancy or whatever. I just am not a hand stitcher at all. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> um, this needle isn't even all that sharp. It's one of those um, crafting needles, so it's not really even sharp at the end, but that's what I had. So, like I said, I am no, no embroidery person. My sister's really good at that, but I am not. My thing is paper. <laughs> and I don't mind throwing in a little fabric, but... We'll just go all the way across like cross stitch I guess it doesn't matter it uh, it's all just in fun I don't have a long enough piece here for much but you get the idea you could go all out and make it just super cool but she sort of did sloppy stuff too so I don't feel like I'm that far off with it and I didn't even have any browns or anything <laughs> this is the closest I had so but I think it's fine. And then we're going to put it on here. And I was thinking it might be fun to add uh, one of these. I don't know if I want one to hang stuff off of or do I just want the regular old safety pin just on there. No, it's not very rusty. I want a rustier one. Ooh, this one's good. It's bigger too. Oh my goodness. They all stuck together. We could put something else on there too, like maybe just a bit of this. It's old, could you tell? Don't need all of that up there. No, once again, I need my wax and don't have it. <laughs> I keep forgetting to do that. Because if you know anything about these rusty um, pins, they lose their points. They're hard to get in there, but I think that works. So I've gone, you know, overboard off the rails, like I always do. Totally different than what the originals were, but... <laughs> You know, it's just taking the concept and doing your own thing with it. And that's what I like to do with these magazines. But of course, you could do a much tamer version or whatever you like. And yes, Fabri-Tac would probably work better, but... I don't have any, so this will work just fine. Nor do I want any. I'm not a fan. Must be one of my kids. All right, so there's that side. So now I have this open. There's some extra pages, four pages, that I'm just gonna glue in there like that. 
I'll stitch them across the top, which I forgot to do, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. You guys get the idea of what we're doing. And then I just have um, tea dyed two pieces of paper and glued them together. And I'm going to round the corners. Um... <laughs> How about let's do a better job than what is going on? It's bad. It's bad. You gotta look at you just have to look at the back of these. That's all there is to it. I don't know why I feel like this is backwards, but anyway, you have to do it like that or you will mess it up like I just did. Not horribly, it was recoverable, but and then I have some walnut stain. To go a little around the edge you're not going to see a lot because i'm not putting a lot i'm just kind of hitting the edge just to frame it out a little bit and let's do this too because i'm going to put this back here i don't even know what this is out of some book The basic gist of this is, as far as I can tell, grunge, right? Get it good and grungy and how you like it, and it will be great. Glue stick. And of course, I like to get it pretty grungy, although some of her, like her front cover and stuff was very dark coffee stained it looked like I think this is a book my sister gave me to take apart I like how the coffee stainings up there and then I thought maybe this stamp might look kind of cool on here too but we got to get this glued down first which is going to be interesting I think I might glue stick it just to make sure the whole thing gets gluey. And then I'll add a little PVA glue too. I don't know, it's all an experiment. This could have been stitched through once on the card and that might have been the way to do it. This one couldn't because it would have closed up that bag. So let's try gluing it right side up. That might be good. I kind of got a little carried away with the stitching. I got it a little tight. But once it's glued, it's fine. And it's very bringy. So I think this will work on here now. Oh my goodness. I am just strings, ink, paint. Glue all the things. Let's do maybe. I'm just gonna kind of. I, I don't want it to be perfect. Yeah, that's good. I think I use PV. Oh, I forgot to put any PVA on the back of that. Oh well, let's hope it sticks. <laughs> I guess I'll find out in a few days. I think it will. I don't ever have any trouble with the Scotch Permanent. I've never had stuff fall off, so I don't know. Works fine for me. Don't know. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue right there and just fold that up the way it was when it got inked, ink a dinked. Maybe if my hands will work. Where's my paper towel? It really drives me crazy when I have glue on my hands. The 
That's why I can't use Fabri-Tac. <laughs> oh, actually, do I want maybe a little bit of the script on there? Where did I put that? Just a little. Is that the right side up? Nope, I had it upside down. Oh, <laughs> I think my um, <laughs> archival ink pad is getting dry. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is probably going to be a disaster. Okay, there, that worked. I think that works fine yeah it's getting a little dry I think ah now I'm gonna have to order one of those too it's never ending y'all it just is it just never ending and then what you can also do is glue this part of these bags if you want which I do because otherwise it just seems very floppy and I want it to be a little bit more together. Okay, we're going to open that. This will get stitched across the top and just glued there, and I haven't decided if I want that open or not, so I'm not going to worry about it today. Okay, we're going to put one of these Tim Holtz fellers on there. That's for my friend Mitzi Fellers. <laughs> Mitzi's a hoot, if you guys... Go watch her channel. She will. She's funny. She's got a really awesome sense of humor. And then that goes there. Oh no, I just made a smear on there. Do I want, I think I want something behind him. some white grunge. I think that will be fabulous. This is from my white grunge digital download. Had a boo-boo on that side. <laughs> Happens. Quite frequently. This way you could possibly still write a little bit above him. Although I do like all the rest up there. Let me see. Do I want it like this? I think so. Still need more. Sorry. I know there's this thing called measuring. It's not my it's not my strong suit. Okay, these corners. I think I'll just round them. That might be better looking. Maybe. Maybe not. Oh my word. Why my ears are ringing today. Do your ears ever do that? It's very annoying. It doesn't happen hardly ever, but when it does, it's real annoying. Not sure why. Just out of nowhere. This is very thin paper. I think I accidentally printed this on, yeah, just regular white copy paper because <clears throat> it's very flimsy. I think that's why the uh, corner punch wouldn't punch. Not that the corner punch always punches anyway, but I think that may have been part of the problem. Possibly. Yeah, 
Yeah, it was very chilly out walking this morning. When I first got there, I was like, mm, I sure want to do this. <laughs> but I did. I did it. And I warmed up fast once you get walking and moving. Did I hang? I did hang that over still. Oh my goodness. See, just these little projects, you think, oh, it's just a little something. <laughs> sure. Okay, then we're going to put him on here, and he'll just be a tuck. So you'll be able to put stuff behind him, which is kind of fun. Little tuck. These are great for that. And it feels like it needs more, but I don't know what. Um. No. It's hard with the guy ones because I feel like I want some kind of trim. Oh, this might work nice. I don't know what it is about these, but I struggle with just sticking them on a page. I feel like they need something across the bottom. Don't know. I don't know. Don't ask me. It's just one of my weird little quirks. I made that much harder than it needed to be. <laughs> I don't think it goes all the way, so I don't want to put glue all the way. Oh my word. This is so tiny. Um. I'm going to have to wipe him off with a little rubbing alcohol. He's got glue on him. And then this will go here. I need to stitch across it. Forgot to do that. And then I thought maybe I could put, you know, a journaling card back there. I don't know yet what's going to go on that because all our time was taken with these. But they're the, they're the main pieces. But I wanted to do something with them because I knew that you know people would have questions well what are you going to do with that piece of fabric now could be a journal topper something like this could just be a journaling card like this is just a journaling card so you could do a lot of things with those they're they're pretty fun to play with those um what do you call that when you put the picture on there but uh yeah they're just they're a lot of fun and you can go real grungy like these are grungy or you can obviously not go grungy. You can do the image transfer without doing grunge. But anyway, this was the inspiration. Oh, the lady's name. Judith George. So yeah, this is a very cool book. And I think the pages are just those fabric uh, pages because she's got like, you know, tabs where they all hook together and stuff. So I like that. But I did something different. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I will see you again on Monday. Love you. Bye.